So uh, I, I want to uh, welcome to Sacramento Soul Talks uh, Monica Kleinus. Uh, she's a certified massage therapist, an angelic Reiki pr practitioner, an ordained minister, and the best-selling co-author of Warrior Woman with Angel Wings, an anthology of short inspirational stories. Monica is currently a uh, Healing Hands uh, heart therapist instructor and vice president of its North California region. Later this year, her next book, Empowered by Forgiveness, will be released. So look for that book. Uh, her soul talk is titled, Empowered by Forgiveness. Please put your hands together and welcome to SAC Soul Talks, Monica Kleinus. And what I am sharing with you today is taken from my book um, that I contributed to, uh, which was Warrior Women with Angel Wings, and it's right in the back room. Um, and my own book that's coming out later this year called Empowered by Forgiveness. So I'm going to start out with Empowered by Forgiveness. This is a story of a little girl who endured many hardships in her young life, making it hard to grow up and be strong. She didn't know how to grow up and love herself. From an early age, authority figures only proved to abuse her, leading her to confusion and fear. They taught her to keep everything inside to protect herself and those around her. She learned all the wrong things. This story has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And you might be surprised to the turn of events. But I hope that you see how it gave her empowerment through the art of forgiveness. You see, I am that little girl. And I hope that I inspire you. I hope that I make you believe that you can do anything you want to do. I want you to know that you can get through the tough things in life and learn how to make it right. Thank you for being here with me today. I am honored to be sharing my story and giving others strength and inspiration. I hope that it is you. I eventually came to understand that in harboring the anger, the bitterness, and the resentment towards, that, towards the people who have hurt me, I was giving the reins of control over to them. Forgiving was not about accepting their words and deeds. Forgiving was about letting go and moving on with my life. In doing so, I had finally set myself free. I want to share um, a couple of quotes that I chose that, was, that I felt that that was perfect to share with you. And one of them is by Isabel Lopez. Love is forgiving, accepting, moving on, embracing, and all-encompassing. And if you're not doing that for yourself, you cannot do that with anyone else. The second one is by Edward M. Hollowell. Holding on a grudge does not make you strong. It makes you bitter. Forgiving doesn't make you weak. It sets you free. And free is who I am now. I learned as a little girl to hide things. Adults that I was supposed to respect abused me and broke me down. And I assumed the best way to protect those around me from the pain was to hide it. So I held it in. I thought I was doing the right thing, but I was only falling deeper in my pit of despair. It is often said that people repeat patterns in their life. They fall into the same situations because it is something that they were taught in childhood. I have seen it with friends of mine as well as myself, and I'm not placing blame on us as the victims. It just happens. I believe that we can draw what we put out there, and a traumatized person 
has so much sadness and often hopelessness in their hearts. The key to turn that around is using faith, gaining empowerment in the process that gives us strength. Strength gives us freedom. Justice does not always take place in the form of traditional punishment for those that have wronged us, but we are able to forgive ourselves as well as others. I have found that doing this and letting it go entirely is the best way to heal. I don't know what happened to everyone that caused me trauma in my life now, and I'm fine with that. I have moved on with my heart and discovered a new part of myself. I have discovered who I was meant to be. Some stories have that great plot twist once the child is no longer a child. That is when I was tested the most. You see, in 1987, I was looking forward to something overwhelming but amazing when I was 18 years old. I was pregnant with my first baby, a little girl. Her name is Adriana. There is always worry when one becomes a parent, especially at my age, but it haunted me as a survivor of trauma. Once I was holding my tiny baby in my arms, it hit me full force, and I vowed not to let anybody ever hurt her. I promised her that I would be there to keep her away from predators and people that only want to hurt her. She was so beautiful and vulnerable, I had no idea then what I was going to endure. I noticed that her lips were turning blue as I held her. My gut instinct set in, and I asked the nurse to have the doctor check her out. That took a few tries, but I knew that I was right. Three days after her birth, Adriana had heart surgery to repair an issue with her heart. She was so tiny and helpless, and I'd barely got to hold her. I weakly agreed to the surgery, and then she was in ICU to recover. <coughs> A nurse told me to get ready to go and see her. She told me that Adriana needed me, so I dressed in a second gown, and I allowed her to take me there in a wheelchair. Nervous about what was going on, she, hooked up all the, she was hooked up to all monitors and IVs, and I couldn't hold her. I took turns with her dad, who we weren't together, but we were still friends at the time. We were touching her and talking with her. I sang a little song to her that I started singing when she was inside my belly. I was just getting back into the chair when all the machines began buzzing and ringing. And within moments, the nurses had surrounded Adriana and were doing CPR on her tiny body and checking the machines. Everything went quiet. They shared a long look before telling me that they were sorry. They unhooked her from the machines and wrapped her in a blanket and gave her to me. I was able to take her back to my room for a couple of hours and spend time with her until her body, little body, became cold. I was in shock and disbelief that my baby had passed. I was supposed to protect her, but things happened so fast. I started to spiral at that point. What was supposed to be the joy in my life faded to pain in moments. As she was lowered into the ground, into her casket, I felt myself going into the hole right along with her. I gave in to any escape that I could find. I was only 18 and didn't know how to handle the loss of my daughter. So I started drinking and taking prescription drugs just to not feel the pain anymore. I went into a deep depression and started suffering anxiety attacks, leading to my prescription of Xanax to try and control the instability. It was just supposed to calm me. I ended up getting addicted to the drug, and I still suffered the depression, and even contemplated suicide over the next 17 years. In that time, I had given birth to two amazing sons, but still struggled with my addiction. And I wanted them to inspire me, and they did one night. And I mean my boys. I admitted myself into a mental health center 
and one night eating dinner along with the other patients one evening. At this point, I was supposed to spend another few weeks there to detox and heal, but sitting across from me were these young children close to the ages of my own sons. That gave me a sense of an awakening. I didn't need to be here anymore. I needed to be with my boys, and I signed myself out early of the hospital and went to start a new life with them. I didn't ignore the fact that I needed the detox. I just did it safely and gently in the hospital with the support of my family. I was enlightened at that point. I knew that I had a purpose in this life and chose to forgive. I chose to empower myself and find my self-worth through the help of natural healing. I work in the industry helping others through hospice care and touch therapy as well as working as a massage therapist. I realize now that I had angels with me the whole entire time and opened myself up to them through the faith in God. They love me and are here to watch over me, and one of them being my daughter, Adriana. One of the most beautiful moments for me now is to being able to communicate with her and see her love and strength. I love helping others in their journey. I love giving women the ability to love themselves. I love sharing my story. I was love all that time, and I am love now, and so are you. I want you to know and I want you to understand that this was a long and painful journey for me. I didn't know my purpose when this began, or at least I was losing all sense of it. I didn't even know who I was at times. I depended on my faith and found forgiveness in my heart. I got stronger. I love my life now and understand that all I went through was supposed to be and end up right where I'm at now. Love yourself and empower your soul. In closing, I'd like to read you a poem describing empowerment written by Sarah Jean Barrows. And it's called Dear You. Dear You, broken hearts eventually lead to fresh starts. You are not who you used to be. You are not defined by the chapters that you keep rummaging through. You are an evolving story, a metamorphosis creating mosaic pieces. Leaving spaces for your light to shine through, be gentle with the process. Healing is in the breaking. Loving is in the trusting. Living is in the forgiving. Thank you. <laughs>